having now introduced perturbed um, optimization problems and by the means of perturbation functions, this begs the question what happens to the optimal value of the problem when we perturb our problem. And the way to answer this is very straightforward and will in a natural way lead to the dual problem by means of a certain uh, perturbation function. Okay, and the straightforward way to investigate the question what happens to the optimal value leads to uh, infimal value functions. Okay, so let's give the definition. Um, given a perturbation function phi mapping from H uh, times G to R bar. Um, the infimal value function H um, H here should uh, take a, a perturbation, so uh, basically the second variable to, to phi, and then uh, give back the infimal value of the, the perturbed problem, um, so it should take a, a variable from the space G and return uh, some value from the extended real line, so either a real number or plus or minus infinity. So plus infinity if the problem is basically um, infeasible and minus infinity when the problem is unbounded, that is when there are um, arbitrarily um, small function values. Okay, and the infimal value function is given by that should be no surprise. Uh, we take some value and we want to get back um, the infimum overall phi xy where x um, can go through all the through all the space x uh, all the space h okay so this means um, so end of definition in particular yeah if we take h of zero then we get well the infimum overall x and h uh, phi x zero and by definition of, of the perturbation function this would give um, the infimum x in h of f of x. Okay so this is the optimal value of the problem which we denoted by p in the last video. There, there f was our objective function and we wanted to minimize f, f of x over x and h. Okay, um, now we have seen in the part on conjugate functions that there is uh, sometimes under good circumstances, um, the re relation that the conjugate of the conjugate uh, equals the original function, namely when uh, the function is proper convex lower semi-continuous. Um, now it's very hard still to, to guarantee that H uh, will be um, lower semi-continuous in particular. Uh, convexity is rather easy, we will see that. Um, 
so it's not not clear that h star star of zero uh, will always be equal to h of zero. Um, but still, it, it is <clears throat> interesting um, to um, to calculate h star star of zero because this will, um, in a in a very straightforward way, uh, go to uh, go to the definition of the dual problem. Uh, okay. So to calculate h star star, so the conjugate of h star, um, we will uh, first write that, or first calculate h star uh, of any value. So the goal is let us calculate h star star of 0, OK? Um, so first of all, let b in, so h is a function from g to r bar, so we want b in g, b arbitrary. So what do we have then for h star of b? So this is the supremum. And I, uh, I write the, the variable here below. Supreme overall y and g of. And now, uh, as usual, by the definition of the conjugate function, we take uh, the inner product of b and y minus h of y. OK? Now we can insert the definition of our in infimal value function. So this is the supremum over by minus, and here the infimum x in h of phi x, y, okay, and closing our second, uh, our, our second pair of curly braces. All right, so we have minus the infimum. Uh, this is equal to uh, the supremum of minus the same expression. So we get a supremum over y and g and a supremum over x and h. And this is um, equal to the supremum just taking taking the supremum over both of these variables. So we get supremum over x and h, y and g. Okay, and here b, y minus phi x, y. And this should look very familiar um, because here we have uh, an inner product and here we have the uh, the function phi. And now um, this looks, looks very much like the conjugate function of something, but for the conjugate function of course we have to um, take into account that phi is a function of two variables and we are also in fact taking uh, the supremum over these two variables. And the canonical way to deal with this is to look at the product space. So uh, we endow the product space um, H, um, H Cartesian product with G. This is, in fact, the domain of definition of, of phi. So it takes a variable from H and a variable from G um, with the in a product, um, and here, so we have to take a variable from uh, h, a variable from g, so uh, I guess these variables are called y, and then uh, we have to do the same again. Uh, like so, 
and this is then defined by um, just the sum of those inner products. So x a plus uh, y b um, for all x um, a in h and y b in g. Okay, now we can properly make this um, the conjugate function by taking by, by observing that the inner product of b and y is in fact the inner product of x and a when x or a is equal to zero. Okay, so we can then write h star of b equals supremum and here now we can employ our new notation that a x and y is in the x y the pair is in the product space and we have um, x x cannot be the i mean the the supremum is taken over all x so x cannot be the variable which is set to zero so we said a to zero so this is um, zero b in the inner product with x and y okay minus phi x y okay and this is therefore equal to phi star of um, 0 b by the definition of the conjugate function phi star of phi. Okay. Okay. Notice that this is this here is just these are some uh, local variables here just x y a b which do not have anything to do with the the others. These are just defi just to define the notation of the inner product. All right. So now we have um, calculated h star of b. So then h star star, or let's write the parentheses like usual, um, of 0 is equal to the supremum um, over, uh, let's see, um, overall b in g. And here you take 0, that's this, 0 b minus h star of b. And obviously the inner product of 0 with b is 0. And minus h star of b is the is equal to minus phi star of zero b. Okay, so what have we achieved? We have found an expression for um, the conjugate of the conjugate of h at the point zero um, with the help of the supremum of um, minus the, the conjugate function of phi. Um, now we compare this to uh, the expression for h of zero, which is um, very similar it's, uh, if we take phi here. It's just that here we have phi and not phi star, and just this is an infimum and the supremum, and here we have a, an additional minus. So now, um, if we uh, take the analogy that this comes from the primal problem of minimizing um, basically uh, phi x0 over x, then uh, we can define the dual problem to be the maximization of minus phi star of 0b over b. And this is in fact the definition we will use for the uh, the definition of the dual problem. So definition 
Okay, and again, the dual problem is not canonically given for um, for a problem, so you cannot just write a problem and then I give you the the task of writing the dual problem. Uh, but instead, you have to define a perturbation function and you take the dual problem with respect to this exact perturbation function. If you, if you choose a different perturbation function, then you may, might end up with a different dual problem. All right. So, given a perturbation function, Um, phi mapping from H times G to a bar. Um, the dual problem to um, let's write down P again. Uh, P is minimize Um, like this expression, phi x0 over x in h is, uh, we denote this by d, this is maximize um, minus phi star of 0b over b in g. Okay, and here as you see, um, the h is the space of, of, the, of the variables for the primal problem, g is the space of the variables for the dual problem. So this is a b. Let's make this a bit more readable. All right. So now we have seen that we can use the um, the infimal value function um, to um, get the dual problem, and we see that the infimal value function uh, evaluated at the point zero gives us the optimal value of the primal problem, and the double conjugate of the same function evaluated at zero, evaluated at zero gives us the the optimal value of the dual problem. And uh, now we want to investigate next some optimality conditions uh, which give uh, which um, gives simultaneous uh, optimality for a primal and a dual variable. And we also want to show uh, which uh, what the meaning of a dual solution or of, of a solution of the dual problem uh, is uh, in terms of the primal problem. So these will be the next step um, to, towards uh, finding some nice uh, theorems about uh, primal and dual problem.